All right, so here's our trick or treat route. We start here and go to Target and buy candy. And I did find a loophole where I can give you candy for free if you hold me at gunpoint. Well, it's not really free if we have to buy the gun. Yeah, plus the embarrassment of armed robbery. Guys, just admit it. We're too old to be trick or treating. I'm not 41 anymore. Yeah, plus all these health initiatives are really taking the fun out of trick or treating. Like, they're including apples with my razor blades now. Oh, come on, guys. Where's your holiday spirit? Arbor Day. So what, we're too old for Halloween now? Scott, I don't need Snickers. I need to get my prostate checked. Listen, I think we all have different ideas how Halloween should be spent. Why don't we just figure out a compromise? I have a better idea! Kill me! Because that'll be quicker than what a lifetime of sugar will do! Am I spending Halloween wrong? Do I not know how to properly act on August 92nd? Well, how could I be? I'm celebrating what makes the holiday at its core! Candy. And if they don't believe that, who cares? It's their loss. They'll just have to experience Halloween without Twizzlers, Nicorette, Blue Chew. They'd have to anyways because I ate them all. But candy appreciation can go far further than farther, evident by all the merchandise. Golly, you know what I love more than the thought of chewing a Twix? Being chewed as one. And video games allow us to see what life is like in some of our favorite candy's shoes. It's the scariest time of year. Halloween is here, and better yet, an excuse. I just want to eat chocolate bars and say the word Dracula. Can't go wrong with a standard Hershey's bar. This was my favorite back in the day. There I am. <laughs> Memories. I can still get behind them nowadays, but only via leaked footage. This is baseline chocolate. There ain't nothing special about this unless there's peanuts jammed in it. But I was a picky eater back then. Uh, see? I found peanuts and almonds to be invasive, ruining the purity of my chocolate, the scariest thing on Halloween. Oh, well, they make things more interesting. Yeah, so does having wet mice in your bed. Regular M&Ms versus peanut M&Ms? More like regular M&Ms versus go f yourself. Oh, God, yeah, I'm already pissed off. But you know what? Maybe I need to get more comfortable around these things in order to accept a peanut up their ass. Well, what better way to do that than try out the huge lineup of M&M's video games? My lord, this is insane! There's so many more than some of the biggest gaming franchises! Uh, what does M&M's and Xenoblade Chronicles have in common? Nothing, because M&M's has two more games. I think the mascots have something to do with that. Uh, most candies out there don't have them. M&M's, on the other hand, not only do we have mascots, they all have their own sh Dick, uh, like the smart ass and the sexy one. So crafting a game out of these is surely easier than sugar daddies. I was just informed it isn't. So what are you supposed to be? Whoa, I'm a liar. Me too, F vampires. I'm going as if the wolf man was going as me. I'm trying to go as adult, but I need more time. Well, if we're all gonna be adults this Halloween, we gotta lay down a couple of ground rules. Rule number one, no rules. Rule number two, no candy. But what if I'm giving up not Swedish fish for Lent? Improvise! Now that's maturity! If you keep this up, we'll be miserable in no time! Oh man, this is so awesome! I'm like a kid in the candy store. Get the f*** out. The first M&M's game released was The Lost Formulas on PC in the year 2000. Though it got a version on PlayStation a year later titled M&M's Shellshocked. Yep, PTSD. The M&M's minis have turned the candy factory into a madhouse, and it's up to the M&M's with feet to save the day. Now, let me ask you a question. What's your biggest problem with Crash Bandicoot? A, can't eat him. B, melts in my hand, not in my mouth. C, he's not an M&M. Whatever your answer is, we're safe here. Yeah, this is a direct clone of the Crash games on PS1 in every way. Uh, from the breakable crates to your spin attack move, it's pretty blatant. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. That is. Hey, I gotta give them credit. If you're making an M&M's game and do anything more than the bare minimum, I mean, that's a great pickup line. But what we have here is a sloppy ass crash knockoff and nothing more. I've seen worse, but not by much. Well, maybe M&M's Minis Madness will be slightly better than worse. This feels like a handheld adaptation slash variant of Shellshocked. They'll even reusing art from it. So resourceful, can't wait for the next game. It's more original than Shellshocked, that doesn't mean it's good. I would have taken an exact copy of Mario Golf with the yellow M&M in the corner, but no, we get a cheap ass poorly designed 2D platformer you wouldn't play for any other reason than going through candy games on Halloween. M&M's games can be like the least offensive thing you could buy a kid. 
can be. It's like, you don't know what the kid likes. Get them a candy themed video game. I don't know. They must like candy, right? And something like this will suffice. The kid will play it. But when I play this game, I just get this lingering feeling. Mom and I aren't very close. These games are just whatever. I mean, they aren't good, but like they're games based on chocolate. If a color popped up on screen, I consider that to be a miracle. But see, these were laying the foundation for M&M's games to follow. Over on the Game Boy Advance, we got two more titles, M&M's Blast and M&M's Break'em. Now, what does the next generation of handheld gaming mean for my two M's? A Mario Party clone and a reskin of some puzzle game from 2003. I might convert. A puzzle game is probably the most sound genre for the M&M's. Like, look at this. And oh, now there's two. You did math. And Break'em is a completely competent M&M's puzzle game. But that's only because it's not an M&M's puzzle game. Now, outside of the plot, we have to stop Mr. Runch because according to the M&M's wiki, he has evil alignment and what's even scarier is the impending announcement of his appearance. M&M's Blast is a cobbled together Mario Party ripoff, but damn it, it does the job of a licensed candy game for kids perfectly. This has such heavy shut the fuck up kid energy to it. Just something for them to do in the backseat of an hour long car ride. Uh, basically, it's a 10 out of 10 at being a four. But you know what? M&M's on Game Boy Advance is like the M&M's in my pocket. Oh, God. A very playable slop. I just don't get it. Why do all the M&M's games feel like they just cram the characters in at the last second? You can do so much with the concept of I'm the blue M&M. That's every kid's fantasy. My nickname is every kid. It's just all so generic, but hey, over on the Wii and DS, we have the largest output of M&M's games to date, which surely must mean oh my God. God. M&M's Adventure, M&M's Beach Party, and M&M's Kart Racing. And now I've talked about all these games before while diving into shovelware, so I've had time to prepare my statement. What the f***? Let's start with M&M's Adventure because I have the nicest things to say about it. It's bad. But you know what? It's a surprisingly capable 3D platformer for being such a giant piece of sh**. Even though it says adventure, I've come to expect just piss poor minigame collections from these types of Wii games. So the fact that it's an actual video game, I mean, is this reality? Yup. M&M's Beach Party. This finally answers the question of what happens when you get sand on my M&M's? This game. And finally, there's M&M's Kart Racing. This was not the ideal era for those who just wanted to do everyday things as the blue M&M. Go-karts, skee-ball. Was there a reason why M&M's games turned out the way they did? You could have made this Vlasic beach party and replace all the M&M's with the stork and nothing would change. And this was it for M&M's games for years until 2021, where we got a remake of M&M's Adventures for mobile devices. I can't wait to see how they changed the game. Oh wow, they changed the music. Whoa, are those M's? Yeah, and also M's. Gosh, I've always wondered, Danil. What are they doing? I'm not chewing them. You got any Skittles? Throughout my entire life, I've always been a chocolate user. That's my go-to style of candy. The sour stuff, you're a masochist. Gummies, you're taking part in a science experiment. Now, fruity junk, though, I was always a bit more open to that. I mean, how could you resist the fruit Tootsie Rolls? Okay, well, there's one way. But Starburst, Airheads, Laffy Taffy, all great stuff, though. It always came back to the Skittles. I always enjoyed a Skittle or two, but what I really loved was Skittles gum. That's right, I loved Skittles so much I never wanted to swallow. So I think a video game based on the candy would be perfect for somebody like myself. I just wanna Skittle around for as long as possible, engross myself in the world of misspelled M&Ms. Give me Skittles the video game. Oh! Yeah, I'm sorry, I just get a little freaked out at anything that isn't Skittles the video game. Ah! What even is this? Darkened sky? Just a generic fantasy adventure game? <laughs> Okay, let's look further into this. Well, how are we gonna decorate these pumpkins? Nah, that's too whimsical. 
We can write our last will and testaments on them. Uh, I'd rather wait to deal with that when I'm ready and dead. Why wait? Dear Will, I leave to you my childhood collection of... Your childhood?! Only children have childhoods! Boo! I can explain! It, it was just a phase! Well, I'm going through a phase too! It's called getting you the hell out of here! Okay, so this was developed alongside Eminem's The Lost Formulas, but was something far different, and more so influenced by the Skittles ad campaign at the time, rather than based on it. You had some very fantasy-based Taste the Rainbow commercials, so here's a completely original fantasy game with absolutely no mention of Skittles on the box outside of the copyright notice. But then, you jump into the game, and how do you use magic? Why, with Skittles, of course! Is this supposed to make me hungry? for Skittles or use them for more than just food. Yep. This is genuinely one of the strangest video games to ever exist, especially when looking at the development. When the company behind Skittles reviewed the project for approval, this action adventure game that had next to nothing to do with Skittles, uh, basically the only feedback they gave was no snakes. You can have things that look like snakes, but no snakes. Do they even get their fan base? I think the Skittles license is so weird here because it's just there and they do nothing with it. Skittles are magic orbs in this universe. That's it, which is even stranger considering the script to this game is very referential, meta, tongue in cheek, and the fact they go through the whole thing just accepting that they get their power from damn Skittles, I just don't understand. A Especially when there's no snakes in the game! Darkened Sky by itself is a very average action adventure game from the early 2000s. It's not bad, but nothing to write home about. Which means the Skittles save it. Without that, there'd be no reason to even discuss this game anymore, especially without any snakes! I'd like to see an Almond Joy do that. What's the matter, Rex? I'm a bitch. Oh, well, we welcome all here! Bitches, scumbags, motherfuckers. And you check off two of those. Come on, sit down, Skittles. Well, there's a reason it's called Skittles and Bitches. What's it? Skittles were pretty rad, man. I mean, I always felt like a bag of these almost substituted a meal when I was a kid. Ah, uh, yes, the three bags of Skittles a day diet. I don't know if this is cherry or blood, but I did really enjoy this stuff, which surprised me because chocolate was always my go-to. Maybe what if all those candies I shunned before were actually f***ing amazing? Sour Patch Kids stunned me with how amazing they were when I first tried them. You got that immediate sour fall by the delectable sweetness. It just made for such an addictive taste. You must be saying, wow, Scott, if you were such a big fan of Sour Patch Kids, surely you played World Gone Sour for Xbox Live Arcade. Who? Yes, published by Capcom, it's the Sour Patch Kids video game narrated by Creed Breton. And no, we're not playing Two Truths and a Lie. Actually, not a horrible platformer. Pretty decent production values for being a downloadable title from 2011 as well. I'd honestly say this is the best candy-based video game ever created. But how could I say that before trying Smarty's Meltdown? I can see the future! This is a European only release, evident by the fact the Smarties in this game are actually edible. Yeah, you ever see the difference between Smarties in Ohio and Smarties in countries they know what Smarties should be like in? What would you rather have? A bigger, softer M&M? Or f***ing chalk? Well, Smarties Meltdown has us take control of not f***ing chalk in a 3D platformer that I'd say is a lesser version of M&M's adventure. This feels so pathetic, man. I mean, even the character we control, it's a faceless circle. You wanna know why they didn't give him a face? Because he'd just be an Eminem at that point. It just feels like an attempt to do what Eminem's was doing, which they weren't even attempting to do anything in the first place. I mean, my God, how are there so many candy-based games but barely any at the same time? Do I count the Gummy Bears games on Wii? What about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory based on the movie? Or how about Candyland? Jelly Belly Ballistic Beans, the Tootsie Roll Family Learning Fun Pack, the Wonka Zoids, candy that came with an LCD video game, the Sweet Tarts 3D game on PC, Pez Play on iOS, the Butterfinger Xbox controller, Gumball? I just don't get it. I feel like there should be more, but there should be less at the same time. And there's potential with some of these. How the Sour Patch Kids game ain't half bad. But most of these are just complete wastes of the license and time. Maybe I am spending Halloween wrong. Maybe 
maybe I do need to grow up. Or maybe... Maybe it doesn't matter. Because honestly, regardless of if I'm doing childlike or adult things on Halloween, everything just feels right when you're doing it around your people. Even this. So instead of bobbing for apples, as adults, we'll bob for credit card debt. Nothing more childlike than some soggy fruit. Soggy fruit, you're no adult. I can't believe I thought I could have authentic adult-only experience with you this Halloween. Enjoy your credit card debt, minor. Woo yeah! 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 Hey, Target employee, how's adulthood? Oil changes, prostates, income fraud, mowing the lawn, slowing down in a school zone, remembering the good old days, f***ing the neighbor's wife, that's adultery. Knowing what adultery is. Wait, that's adulthood? I just want to spend Halloween correctly. Well, it turns out you were. There's no right way to spend Halloween correctly, but if there was, I think we're doing it right now. Hey y'all, Scott here, and there's no right or wrong way to spend Halloween, as long as you're with your friends. And most of them survive. 